Hi everyone, it's Justin. We are slowly transitioning from summer to fall, so if you live in a region that has more than one season, now is the time to switch wardrobes. This video is a guide to help you sort, clean and store your summer clothes until next year. The sorting is pretty straightforward, but the cleaning and the storage, there I will be sharing some tips which I think you'll want to know about to avoid the bad surprises after storing your clothes over a longer period of time, you know, when you unpack them and <gasps> your favorite sweater has a huge stain, or your cashmere as a whole. <laughs> Let's start with the sorting. When switching seasons, the first step is to make three piles with your clothes. On pile A, you put the basics, the jeans, the t-shirts, the pieces that you wore this summer and can still wear this winter. That stays in your wardrobe. Pile B is for the clothes that you have not worn this summer. They don't fit anymore with the rest of your wardrobe or you don't really like them. You're not gonna wear them again next year, realistically. Sell or donate. I have done the sorting out last month personally, so I'm all set on that matter. Pile C, the summer garments that you want to keep and wear again next summer. So these are either your favorite pieces, you wore them a lot this year already and will do so next year as well, or maybe you haven't worn these pieces so much because you were working from home more than usual, but you're not ready to part with these yet and they will get a second chance next summer. Now we want to take care of pile C and make sure that these babies look as good in six months as they do now, which brings me to my next point, the cleaning. Everything that you put into storage must be clean. Not only look clean, but really it should have been cleaned. Any stain on a garment, if you leave it for several months, will grow. For instance, a tiny tomato sauce stain on a polyester garment will expand dramatically because polyester doesn't know how to absorb fat, and then you're gonna unpack that top or whatever and say, hmm, how did I not notice that stain? It was there, but it was too tiny to notice, so you don't want to take that risk. Bacteria expand and multiply, that's what they do. So when I say that I rarely wash my wools during a season, the moment of switching from summer to fall, or from fall to summer, is when I will make sure to thoroughly wash everything, according to each garment's care instructions, of course. If you're not sure about the meaning of these little icons on your labels, I have a video explaining all those icons. I will link it here and down below. If you wash your wool garments yourself in your washing machine at home, please always remember that water plus heat plus movement makes felt. If you don't want your wool garments to shrink to a doll size and get real stiff, like felt is, only wash these garments with cold water and let them air dry instead of spin drying them. I know it would be a lot faster if you could just put everything together, wash it all at once and then give it all a good spin dry, but please don't do it. By the way, now I use a filter on my washing machine to prevent pollution. I will tell you more about this later in the video because it deserves a proper explanation. For items that can't be washed, like shoes, I put them in a zip plastic bag, the kind that you can also freeze food in, just different bags, <laughs> and I leave them in the freezer for a couple of days. That will kill a fair share of the bacteria. If the shoes are too dirty, the freezer won't do the job. Then I will send them to be professionally cleaned inside and outside, but the more I can do at home by myself, the better. Then comes the storage question, and that's where most mistakes happen, I would say. I recommend that you do not use a plastic box, because plastic doesn't breathe, and bacteria love that. <laughs> plastic boxes exposed to direct sunlight will also discolor the clothes inside the box. I would also avoid cardboard boxes, like uh, moving boxes, because paper attracts humidity and therefore is great to get mold. <laughs> they also attract silver fishes that eat fabric and cockroaches. My favorite option is a fabric container with a zipped closure, so moths, crawling animals of any kind, and dust cannot get in. Then you want to place your clothes into the containers sorted by weight, with the heavyweight fabrics and garments at the bottom, and then the lightweight ones on top. It's even more important if you're switching from winter to spring, so the other season switch, and when you're putting into storage your, your heavyweight garments, really, because they would crash the lighter weight ones. You can even roll your wool all together instead of folding them to avoid creating creases. And in the middle, I use the fillers, you know, that you get when you buy new shoes. This way, everything stays in shape and I can safely put things on top. Make sure that you separate garments that could damage each other. Like a sequin dress should not go next to a silk top. It could scratch it and if you like the silk top, you don't want that to happen. Don't squeeze too much into one container. Just get one more container if you need it because the clothes need space and they need to breathe. 
In each container, I add a lavender sachet wrapped in muslin or in any other cotton fabric. Some people use moth balls, but that's camphor and it's toxic. So I personally prefer the natural solution and it makes me think of the south of France, so great. For the shoes, I proceed a little bit differently. Each pair of shoes gets its own bag and then all these fabric bags go into one bigger one. That's because, for instance, leather shoes tend to bleed or to damage other types of fabrics and materials. So leather shoes needs to be separate for sure. And then also hygienically. If one gets mold, you don't want the other shoes to be contaminated, so to speak. I also stuff each shoe with, uh, well, silk paper because I have leftovers. <laughs> but tissue paper uh, would do the job also just fine and it's a lot cheaper. Once you're done packing all your fabric containers, you want to store them in a place that is dark, where the air is cool and dry. So if you have a closet so that corresponds to that criteria directly in your flat, that's ideal. Otherwise, a garage or a basement can work too if they're not humid. Okay, now I will tell you more about the filter that I installed on my washing machine because I think everyone needs to know about it. You know, washing machines don't filter microfibers. Microfibers are microscopic particles of plastic that your clothes lose every time that you wash them. There is not a single brand of washing machines in the world that filters microfibers because it's not mandatory in any country. You might think, okay, but used water goes to water treatment plants, so it gets clean later. But no, these plants are made to filter organic waste. So if they do catch some microfibers together with other wastes, you know what they do with that waste? <laughs> Most of the time it ends up in landfill or it is turned into fertilizer for crops. Either way, it ends up in our food, our groundwater, and ultimately in the oceans. It's a major issue in the apparel industry, but you know, you can't say, okay, everyone, let's all stop washing our clothes forever. What I didn't know is how much microfibers you produce when you do your laundry at home, you know, as a regular person. The answer is every three to four washes, you're producing the equivalent of one plastic bag. Imagine each household in the world throwing one plastic bag into the ocean every week. <laughs> We're talking about huge pollution. Now, there is a young company called Planet Care, which created a solution to that problem. It's a filter system that you can add to your existing machine in a super easy way. It retains microfibers in cartridges like this one. You do your laundry, the cartridge fills up, and then you send it back to Planet Care. They clean it and send it to somebody else, and they recycle the microfibers that you collected. It's all part of their service. It's a closed loop service, and it's the only one in the market. It's such a big deal that they're backed by the European Union. If you want that filter system for your machine, I've been in touch with Planet Care, who agreed to sponsor this video. They're offering their starter kit for 49 euros 50 instead of 59.50 within Europe. If you're outside of Europe, there is a bigger starter kit for the shipping to be worth it, but you also get a really good deal. This offer is limited. It's for the first 500 of my subscribers who order a starter kit. You just need to follow the link in the video description and use my discount code at checkout. I hope that every one of you who's interested will get the deal. It's exclusive. All right, thumbs up if you learned something new in this video. Thank you very much. And I would also love to hear how you clean and store your clothes. Let me know your secret tips in the comments. As mentioned, the other video about the care instructions on clothes labels will be linked here and down below in the description for you. And if you're taking advantage of this season switch, wardrobe switch, to also reassess, update your wardrobe and find the pieces that you're missing for the next season, I have a video which is called Capsule Wardrobe Planning to help you do just that. It will also be linked here. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet. And I will see you very soon in the next one. Take care. Bye.